If you are following the tech news, this recent headline might have caught your eye. The Promise is an improved internet experience, not only thanks to increased bandwidth, but also through a pioneering ultra-low lag connectivity experience update. The technology powering this upgrade is based on a standard called low latency, low loss, scalable throughput. What's interesting is that we often get frustrated when our Netflix stream buffers or Instagram takes too long to load, but what we rarely consider is the vast complex infrastructure that makes the internet work. From nearly 1 million miles of submarine fiber optic cables crossing the ocean floor, to thousands of Starlink satellites in low Earth orbit, or the relentless push for faster, more efficient network protocols, the physical backbone of the Internet is a marvel of modern engineering. Contrary to what many might think, the Internet isn't some ethereal wireless entity floating in the cloud, so in the next few minutes we'll explore the actual technology that keeps your Internet fast, reliable and accessible. We'll start with the MVP of this infrastructure, the underwater cables carrying around 99% of all international data traffic. Have you ever stopped and wondered how come you can access a website hosted on the west coast from your flat in Berlin in a matter of seconds? It's all thanks to an intricate web of fiber optic cables transmitting your data as light that pulses through ultra-thin glass fiber at nearly the speed of light. Each cable, often stretching thousands of miles, is a marvel of engineering built to withstand deep-sea pressures, extreme temperatures, and even accidental damage from marine life. To give you a bit of perspective, note that the Southeast Asia to West Europe cable spans over 20,000 kilometers and connects Singapore to France through Egypt terrestrial cables. If you think this is impressive, you'll be surprised to find out that the first transatlantic cable was 4,000 miles long and was installed almost 150 years ago in 1858. The telegraph cable was laid between Canada and Ireland and it took over 400 engineers to complete. Due to the ever-increasing demand for internet access, new submarine cable projects continue to expand this network with major investments from big tech companies alongside traditional telecom providers. But, while fiber remains the backbone of the internet, it has one big limitation. It requires physical installation. This means that laying new cables is expensive, time-consuming and often impractical in remote areas. On top of that, while durable, cables can be seriously damaged. In 2008, a single ship anchor accidentally severed two major cables in the Mediterranean, cutting off internet access to 75 million people across Egypt, India and the Middle East. More recently, in 2022, Tonga was completely disconnected from the internet for over a month after an undersea volcanic eruption severed the only submarine cable connecting the island nation to the outside world. Luckily for us, there is a pretty cool alternative. In recent years, we are witnessing the rise of low-Earth orbit satellite networks, spearheaded by companies like Starlink, OneWeb and Amazon's Project Kuiper. Unlike traditional geostationary satellites, which orbit at around 35,000 km above Earth, LEO satellites operate at much lower altitudes. This dramatically reduces the time it takes for data to travel from source to destination, known as latency. A traditional satellite internet connection can have latencies exceeding 600 milliseconds, whereas Starlink's network averages around 20 to 40 milliseconds, which is closer to the response times that fiber offers. However, the real value of LEO satellites is in providing internet access to remote areas where the cost of laying traditional fiber optic cables or building cell towers is prohibitively high. Of course, low Earth orbit networks come with their own set of challenges, including high deployment costs, frequent satellite replacements since the average satellite lasts between 5 to 7 years, and the need for a dense network of satellites to ensure global coverage. While fiber and satellites form the backbone of global connectivity, most of us rely on cellular networks for everyday internet access. Over the past decade, 4G has provided fast mobile broadband, but as demand for data continues to surge, 5G is stepping in to push mobile internet performance to the next level. Unlike Wi-Fi, which has a limited range, cellular networks provide broad coverage by using a network of towers and radio frequencies to transmit data and voice communications. Cellular networks divide geographic areas into cells, each covered by a base station. These towers act as relay points, handling signals between devices and the broader network. As you walk or drive, your phone switches between towers to maintain connectivity. While people are still burning 5G towers, 6G research is already underway, aiming for speeds 100 times faster than 5G. Of course, all cellular and satellite traffic ends up in the same fiber optic network infrastructure that carries data across cities, countries and continents. These connections usually happen in data centers and internet exchange points, which are large facilities in charge of routing and managing data traffic between different networks. 
In a practical example, if you are in Berlin streaming a video from a server in California, your request is routed through submarine cables, cellular networks and fiber backbones, eventually reaching an exchange point where it gets directed to the right content delivery network and sent back to your device. This brings us to another important aspect of this entire infrastructure, bringing the actual services and data closer to the end user. If the data stored in California would also be stored in the UK, it would significantly reduce the distance it needs to travel, leading to faster load times, lower latency and reduced network congestion. This is where edge computing and content delivery networks come into play. CDNs are distributed networks of servers strategically placed in different geographic locations to store cached copies of frequently accessed content. Instead of fetching data from a single, faraway data center, CDNs allow users to retrieve it from the nearest available node, ensuring faster load times and a smoother browsing experience. Edge computing takes this concept further by processing data closer to the end user instead of relying on distant cloud data centers. This is particularly important for applications that require real-time data processing and low latency responses like autonomous vehicles, augmented reality or AI-powered assistants. Estimates say that approximately 5.5 billion people use the internet. On average, these users spend around 6 hours and 36 minutes online daily. So this massive internet infrastructure has to handle an even bigger amount of traffic. Naturally, this leads to congestion when too many data packets compete for limited bandwidth, causing delays, buffering and packet loss. This is where network protocols like the low-latency, low-loss, scalable throughput come into play. The protocol introduces a smarter approach, using real-time network conditions to dynamically adjust the amount of data transmitted over the wire. Instead of being reactive and waiting for packet drops to signal congestion, it continuously measures latency and loss, proactively adapting the flow of data. Building on this approach, future networks are planned to use artificial intelligence to predict congestion, reroute traffic dynamically, and optimize bandwidth allocation in real time. This will allow internet providers to adjust their networks proactively, improving reliability and reducing slowdowns. So there it is, the internet infrastructure that operates like a finely tuned machine, constantly adapting to meet the ever-growing demands of billions of users procrastinating on Instagram Reels. If you found this video interesting, you should watch one of these ones next. Until next time, thank you for watching.